first time I can. So most of you guys are you guys are veterans. Yeah? No? Okay. We're going to read a story here. I like the theme that Brother Josh uh, picked out this year. Uh, splat. You guys know what it means yet? Splat. Look at it. Laziness. All right. I'm sorry. Selfishness, pride, laziness, apathy, and trends. I like it a lot. And uh, perhaps in the afternoon sessions, you guys are going to have some more direct teaching on that, those principles there. But just praying for God. I had a sermon I wanted to preach, but it didn't. God changed my mind on some things, and uh, God gave me another sermon I want to preach to you. Um, I just want to help you. Just want to help you, okay? At the very beginning, I know Pastor Callie preached last night. And just something I think that we need to establish, we need to do, make sure our hearts are right with God in this first session that we have here today. For 2 Kings chapter 5, we're going to read every other verse. I, I want to read the first verse, verse number 20, and then I want you to read out loud, uh, verbatim, back and forth. Does that make sense? You guys got it? Sure. Well, all right, let's read this passage together. I'm going to start at verse number 20. It says, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Together, ready? So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well, my master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment together. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bared them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from the hand and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go, and they departed. But he went in, together, ready? But he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. What is that called? A lie. Oh, Josh. Look at I'm sorry, these guys need to grab chairs before you get them. All right. Come on, guys, grab chairs. Down, down, down. Alright, take a picture. Take a picture. You gotta take a picture of me. Here we go. Come on, smile. Here we go. Smile. Here we go. Smile. One, two, three. Alright, this side. Let's go. Let's go. It says, And he said to him, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men's servants, and maid servants? Gave him like three or four questions right there. Last verse together. Ready? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Let's talk about the story right here. If you guys uh, read the, you might be real familiar with the story of Naaman. Naaman being a captain of the guard, and he had a servant girl that was a Hebrew, and she knew of the man of God, and she knew that if her, and Naaman had leprosy. And she knew, she believed that if Naaman went to see Elisha, that 
God would heal him, and he did. Naaman went over to Elisha, to his area. They, uh, Elisha told him what he had to do. He had to dip into what? You guys know? Jordan, Jordan River, how many times? Seven. Seven times. Was he healed? Yes. yes, God took away and healed Naaman of his leprosy. This is after the story. I can imagine if you were, think of if you were Naaman, you had leprosy, and then all of a sudden you're healed. That means all those restrictions, and maybe you might not all of them know the restrictions, but when you're leprosy, you could you had to, you had to be separated from everyone else. You you're, uh, claimed to be unclean. You had to um, um, uh, be away from your family. I can't imagine that. A lot of restrictions. Then dying, your, your fingers are falling apart, your ears are falling off, your tongue, I don't know, nose is coming off, no hair, or whatever it might be. All of your body, it's a terrible way to die. There are still leper colonies in this world, too. In India, and there's parts of Asia, there's such there. What a terrible disease, and God healed them. And I imagine if God healed you of that disease, wouldn't you be thankful? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to re re give back to and show your graciousness and your appreciation to, to whoever helped you out? Whether it might have been a doctor or someone else that uh, gave you the cure of a disease. And Naaman was such. He wanted to give back to Elisha, but Elisha being a man of God, said, no, it's okay. God did the work. I don't need anything. But Naaman, had, or, uh, Elisha had a servant name. Gehazi. Say Gehazi. Gehazi. Not a Gehazi. I think that's how you say it. He went behind the back of Naaman. He told him a lie. So there's two prophets up here envisioning us. And they and do we want I know I know my master said he didn't want anything, but now he wants some things. Can you give us something? And Naaman being, of course, still appreciative. Oh, sure, what do you want? Two times, I'll give you some clothes, where it might be, I'll give you some money, silver shirt. And he gave it to him again. Bible says that uh, you read that verse, and he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go and they departed. He hid those gifts, thinking that Elisha did not know. Of course, God told Elisha. Look at verse number 25 again. But he went in and stood before his master. Trying to be innocent. Stood before his master. Elisha said to him, What's come, thou to Hazi? And he said, Oh, then I said, We wouldn't know whither. It's a lie. And he exposed, in verse 26, he exposed him. That one phrase, Went not my heart with thee? Went not my heart with thee. I want to talk a little more about that. But punishment came here. Leprosy. Verse 27. The leprosy is therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. I want you to notice one thing. And maybe something that you can't really notice it. But you see the questions of what's not here. First of all, he asked him a question. He lied. That's a sin. And then when, look at verse 26, is, uh, um, is, it, is it time to receive money and to receive garments, olive yards, vineyards, sheep and oxen, men servants and maids? So he asked him two questions right here. And I don't know, I, I don't know if necessarily they're rhetorical questions. I know sometimes you parent or your teacher might ask you a question, they don't want you to answer, they just want you to make you realize the mistake you made. But I believe he could have made things right right then. I believe right then he could have confessed his sin, admitted. There's no admittance right here at all from Gehazi, the sin he committed. And that's, that's a problem. And we're, I want to talk today about two, the two mistakes that Gehazi had of his dishonesty and his lack of admittance of his problem. His unconfession of his sin. And he went <coughs> splat. When you say again, leprosy is splat with your life, I would say that. How about this? The Bible says, I'm getting maybe get ahead of myself, leprosy, therefore, name it, shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. I can't imagine that. I don't know if he had any kids right then or not. That means all, if he had any children, they had leprosy too. Splat. Splat right there. Let's pray about this. Dear Lord God, I pray you help us now. God, I pray you just give me the word to say. Give me the, the insight and guide my thoughts today. Help us to learn from this mistake of Gehazi. In Jesus' name, amen. Number one, two problems we see here in Gehazi's life. Number one is dishonesty. He lied. Dishonesty, the sin of dishonesty is, is prevalent in all ages. 
is not just for little children that maybe have had their hand caught in the cookie jar and my mom said, don't eat the cookie. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? You know, as a parent, um, uh, I have three kids, and, and there's several times, and all parents understand that sometimes, you know, a little child will be five or six years old, and you know they did wrong, and, and you see them making a mistake, and, and, then, and then when you catch them in the act, and then they say, did you do this? Mm -hmm. I know, I, I'm not going to, I have three children, please don't try to think of who is, I don't want to embarrass you, but I have one of my children that one time, without their parents' supervision, went inside the bathroom and started to style his hair. I shouldn't say his. And, um, and, um, but he didn't use gel. He didn't use, um, hairspray. He used Vaseline. Nice. I have pictures to prove it. My wife comes in there and sees this, one of my children, and looks at that person. I mean, what'd you do? I mean, he has... Okay, it's a heat. All right. He has Vaseline all in his hair, all over his face. I mean, he was making his dude like a spike straight up. What'd you do? How'd you do that? You know you're not supposed to. Did you do that? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to hold back the laugh. <laughs> when you got these things like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I already laughed there. Listen, I think all of us understand that, but dishonesty is not just for children. Dishonesty is for even adults, for me. Where the adult can be dishonest to the government, dishonest to their spouse, dishonest to their employer, but just as much on people dishonest in your life as a teenager, as a youth. All men are guilty of dishonesty in some fashion, whether to your parent or so, what it might be. You are not going to grow in Christ. Listen to this. You're not going to grow in Christ or mature as a Christian until you're honest. You're not. To admit your fault and need for the Lord. You need to be honest. One of the big rules that I have in my house, one of the big rules my dad had in my house, was being honest. My dad, I, I saw a story the other day through my social class, and my dad, when I was in grade school, he was, he was a new Christian, so he was gung-ho about all the rules and everything else, all the regulations, and so what he did to make sure his boys obeyed, he made a list on a steno pad of all the sins that you could commit in my house and the punishment, and then he put it around the refrigerator. And so there were several times I might have been messing around with my brothers or whatever, been horsing around. My dad, he would say, you're not supposed to do that. You disobey your uncle. Tell me your punishment is. And I used to go to that, point, that the, the refrigerator. Man, that's one thing I lost a lot of weight. I didn't want to put a refrigerator because I got reminded of all the things I, uh, I, I couldn't commit. And I had to look on there, fighting with brother, five spankings. Man. But the truth is, I, had a I, I was tempted. What if I just tell my dad three? But then I saw the very top rule, thou shalt not lie. I think that's what he said. Thou shalt not lie, 20 spankings, and two weeks in your room grounded. That's worse. That is, that's, that's a lot. So I didn't want to lie again. You know, people, listen, you are not going to mature in Christ to be honest. Yeah, that's right. You're not going to mature in Christ to be honest to yourself, to your God, to your parents. Good. Sometimes it's easy to admit guilt for obvious incidents. How many guys have ever done something that it's, it's no hiding? You know you're guilty. Your mom and dad are going to catch you. How many guys admit and understand that you've been in a situation like that? I can tell you about a time with me. And I was a teenager at this time, eighth or ninth grade. I'm the oldest of five kids. And uh, so there was a time specifically I was at home and mom and dad went out on a date. And so, of course, it's always, especially my mom would always say this, now, Josh, don't horse around in the house. No rough playing. I don't want anybody to break your arm. While we're on a date, and you had to get a hold of me and everything else. There was no cell phones back then, and I didn't know where they were going. But my, one time, I, I, we, were, we were kind of bored. You know, mom and dad took forever, wherever they went out to eat and everything else. And I said to my brothers, let's have a pillow fight. And I thought, okay, and I said, all right, we can't get too active in here. We can't get too crazy here, all right? All right, what's teams? What's teams? So, like, me versus everybody. And I'm like, I want to do this. I'm the oldest guy. And, and, and we all got our pills early on. So we're smacking each other around. And just, I mean, the truth is, I was getting them. I was pounding them. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Pounding them out. Knocking your sister out. I love my little brother or sister. She was like four years old. You ever take a pillow and just swoop me like, level them. They go feet over there and hit the ground. My sister Jessica was tough. 
Tito, hanging out with three boys and the three older brothers and everything else. And then, listen, it got to the point, man. You know, like WWE or something like that, you, you know you got the victory. You, you're taking your victory lap. You know, you're swinging your pillow around. I had, I remember specifically, I was on the top of my brothers. I piled one here, piled one here, piled my sister on here. And I was like, boom, 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 boom. I'm pounding out. And then my last, I'm like, this is it. I got victory right now. I'm going to knock all three of my kids, my brother's siblings out. I took the pillow up, went like this, and I went like this. And I forgot what was above me. My mom shared the leader. And I, and it was like slow mo. I can picture it right now. I knocked my mom's chandelier in the living room right out of the ceiling. And I remember just watching it go across the ceiling, flying through the air, hit the wall, and shatter. I'm like, I can't hide this one. <laughs> as soon as Bob and Hannah are going to come in the house, they're going to say, there's no electricity <laughs> in the living room, all right? I can't hide that. That's obvious. What about those secret sins that no one else knows? Yeah. Now, God knows. God knows. Those secret, say, those secret sins that we are ashamed of, all of us have ways to hide our faults and our sin. Ecclesiastes 12, 14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Teenager, what are you hiding from your parents? What are you hiding from them right now? What evidence are you covering up trying to avoid being caught? What parental rule are you going around? What sin do you think God does not see in your life? That you think God does not see in your life? The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Young people, I want you to understand, you are not going to grow as a Christian until you're honest with yourself and you admit your faults. Right. You're not. You're not. You're not. What, what, what is it? Is that a text message from that cute guy or cute girl? That's causing you to lust, causing you to, to think thoughts that you shouldn't be thinking? Is it while you're at school away from authority thinking no one else sees me? Yeah. No one else knows what I'm doing. Mom and dad and I here. Is it those couple of hours when your mom and dad run an errand and go on a date like I did, like they did and you knock your chandelier off and, or whatever it might be, but you're watching a program and you shouldn't be watching a program on TV? Is it that messaging app that's off limits that your parents don't know you download it on your phone? Is it creating false accounts on Netflix and social media, trying to hide conversations, trying to hide certain things you're watching yeah. on Hulu yeah. Yeah. and all those, 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 uh, those networks there? Hiding that secret sin. Is it that note you passed to that boy? Or you didn't pass it to that boy, you gave it to someone else to pass to that girl? Or vice versa? What are you hiding? Is it that TV series or movies that you're addicted to? Is it sneaking out of the house past curfew or without parental knowledge? What app are you hiding on your phone or your tablet? And there's ways to hide. I know there's ways to hide apps. And you, you add it and you delete it really fast. Video game conversations. You heard what I said? Video game conversations. Now you're talking to people in your neighborhood, talking to girls in your neighborhood, and there's content you guys talk about in those messages that your parents don't know about it. What are you hiding from God? What are you hiding from your parents? What are you hiding from your spiritual mentor, who that, who that might be? It is one thing when you're dishonest with authority, but I believe it's worse when you're not honest with yourself you don't admit that you have a problem. Yeah. And that's when you're in big trouble. That's when you're going to go splat. When you, see it, when you see you have a problem and you don't want to admit it, that's, that's when you need to get help. This is the verse, Proverbs 20, 17. It says, bread of deceit, deceiving is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth is filled with gravel. Yeah. You know that sin and that, it's almost like an adrenaline. It's almost like a tingling, man, I'm getting away with this. Mom and dad don't know what, it's about, what I'm doing. They don't know I'm talking to this boy. They don't know I'm talking to this girl right here down the street. It's, almost, it's, it's sweet for a little while, young people. But at the end, it's a mouthful of gravel. Yeah. And you know you got to eat it. Yeah. And you're going to eat it. 
Is a tingle deceit worthy of destruction? We see right here one problem that Gehazi had that's being dishonest. Number two is no profession. Look at verse 25. I want you to see it. See it again. But when he went in, verse 25, and went in and stood before his master, and I said to him, Whence comest thou? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said to them, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Like I pointed out already, there's all questions here, but there's no admittance, no confession right here. Elisha asked two questions to Gehazi, no response, no admittance. When the, where was the confession? I really wonder, like I said, if, uh, if he would have asked forgiveness, would his punishment have been different? I wonder if he didn't get punished at all. I mean, he got punished, yeah, he lied, but at least he didn't get leprosy. Maybe Gehazi, Gehazi would have worked leprosy, especially his children even, if he would have asked forgiveness. Look up here, listen up, I want you to understand this. Young people, listen, you, you realize you have a fault, you need to be honest with yourself and realize you have a problem, and then you've got to come to God and confess it. And the wonderful thing is this, God forgives all sin. He does. That's a wonderful thing. It doesn't matter what you've ever done, God forgives it. It doesn't matter what you're ever going to do in the future, God forgives it. It doesn't matter, you might think, no way, God, God yeah, if my parents find out, or if God finds out, he's going to give me leprosy. I don't know if he's going to give leprosy. Listen, but God's going to forgive it. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is faithful, young people. Listen, God is faithful. He'll forgive you. Lamentations 3.22, I love this verse. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassion. Fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I'm so glad that every single morning, Josh Giesel might run out and use up all the mercies that God has given me on the next day. But the next day, God has more mercy to give to me and not condemn me and to cast me out to do what I, I really deserve. Yeah. Young people, God will forgive you. Amen. God will forgive you. But the devil doesn't want you to think that. And I know sometimes you might have made a sin, you committed a sin, and you don't want to commit, you don't want to admit it because you think God won't forget it, and you just believe it, a lie from Satan. Yes, you might have lied and been dishonest to your parents, you must might have lied and lied to your spiritual mentor, you might have lied to your grandmother, your pastor, your youth pastor. Well, listen, young people, don't believe Satan's lies. You can come to God, you, God, can get forgiven, and you can make things right. That's right. A minute of your fault is so vital. When there's no confession of sin, there's no fixing the problem. There's no spiritual growth. How can the Holy Spirit help you mature in the Lord when you're grieving Him in your sin? Yeah. I believe, I think that's... I, listen, you know a lot of these things I tell you because I grew up in a Christian school and I grew up in a Christian home and I thought the same exact things. Yeah. I did. I thought this, listen, some, listen, I always wanted to be close to my mom and dad. I love my dad's in heaven, my mom lives in my area, goes to our home church now. I always want to be close to my mom and dad. Did I disappoint him? Yes. Did I make mistakes? Yes. But there are some times I knew I wasn't close to my mom and dad. And the truth is, sometimes it wasn't a, like a, 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 a personal offense of me disobeying, their, disobeying my parents. But I found out sometimes if I wasn't reading the Bible like I should, if I didn't have the right kind of friends, if I was going around my parents' back, my relationship with them, my God-given authority was not right. And some of you, maybe you have, you don't feel totally collect, connected to your parents, or you don't feel totally connected to your pastor. Maybe it might not be a direct sin, or you might not directly disobey them, but the reason why, because you're hiding something in your life, and therefore you do not have a close relationship to your parent. Yeah. Think about it. Right. Think about it. What we need is an old-fashioned, Holy Ghost yielding, authority submitting, parent love and confession. You need to ask forgiveness for your sin. You need to ask forgiveness for your sin. Who do I need to ask? It could be your parents. It could be parents right now. Look up here and listen. Listen, listen, listen. A youth cannot be right with God without being right with his parent. Right. You cannot. Right. You cannot be right with God if you're not right with the authority God's given you. That's right. That's Young right. people, listen. Some of you won't. Listen. Some of you won't make a good decision this whole week because you haven't made it right with your parent. Mm -hmm. Right now. Some of you, and I don't know what Holy Spirit's telling you, you need to call your mom and dad right now after this service. Some of you might need to call your spiritual mentor and say, hey, listen, I'm sorry I'm doing this. Yeah. I've been covering this up so much. I'm sick of it. 
I'm not happy. I don't have peace in my life. I don't have joy in my life. Listen, you need to make things right today. That's right. You need to make things right with your mom and dad today. And I know you might you not be able to see them face to face, and, and you might and when we get back to camp. But listen, listen, if you if you say, well, I'll do when I go home, you got five days to devil do anything. And if you're not with God, the Holy Spirit might not convict you of something. If everything, you know, one thing, listen, God is not going to show you his will until you're right with your authority. Some of you might hear, might need to hear a sermon, but you're not right with your, your parental authority. You're not right with your spiritual authority. And then therefore you don't make that good decision for life. You need to make things right. Some of you need to call your parents right after this. Go to your counselor and say, hey, Miss so and so, Miss so and so, I need to call my mom right now. And you don't want to confess your sins to your counsel, but you need to confess your sins to your parents. Yeah. Think about it. Who do you need to go to? You could be a youth pastor, teacher, bus captain, a friend. How about God? Yeah. How about God before you go to your parent, man? God sees everything. He already knows all of our faults already. He knows my faults. He knows already all the sins I've already committed already today. You need to go to God. Right. What sins do I need to confess? Selfishness? Here we go, splat. Here we go, pride. Laziness, apathy, the things of God. It could be deceit, covering up, giving into the trends of this world, whether it be through music, whether it be through dress, whether it be social media, whether it be entertainment, whether it be media. It could be pornography, worldly music that glorifies yourself instead of God. Yeah. Whose heart are you going to break? Look at verse 26 now. Elisha says, And he said, Went not my heart with thee? Went not my heart with thee? Don't know, maybe to read. I looked some things up in there. I seen the Hebrew there. It just means you see of your affections. Listen, I've given my heart to my kids. Your parents have given your heart to you. That's why they're willing to do anything. Brother Adam, you have four kids, right? Yes. Will you die for them? Yes. Did that just happen? It did. I remember when I was holding Jordan, my first hold. And when I was holding him, man, I don't know, God, it's God given. Dude, if someone came in here, I would jump in front of a bullet. I would run in front of a car to protect my children. Yeah. Your parents have given your heart to you. They've given their heart to you. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. You just want to drop it Mom. and give it up for silver yeah. and clothes. And olive yards. That's what it says here. Oxen, men's servants, maid servants. It's all about riches here. He just gives all these things to Gehazi. Elisha's saying, Are you going to give it all for that? My heart went with you. You just want to give it all up. The truth is, you have God's or you have your parents' heart in your hand. And you can break it or cherish it. Yeah, you can break it or cherish it. As a father, and you, and this is the devil might be saying this to you right now. My parents won't forgive me. Now, I don't know all of your parents, but the fact that you're here and they didn't abort you, that you have clothes on your back, whoever your authority is, pastor, there's nothing. I think you can say the same thing. There, if my kids came and told me, Dad, I'm sorry for this, there is nothing I wouldn't forgive them. Yeah. There is nothing. That's right. Because I love them. Right. How much more your heavenly father? The devil might be saying, oh, your parents won't forgive you. No, that's a lie of Satan. They'll forgive you. Right. Right. They'll forgive you. You just got to take that step sometimes. How much mercy our Heavenly Father gives to us? What sin is dividing your life from God's eternal joy? What sin is it? What habit? What thing is pulling you away from spending more time with God? The Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him it is sin. You might know you're supposed to go so on him and you don't. You know you're supposed to go to church, but you don't. That's sin. Why well, rather hang out and play video games all day? And that happens a lot with young people. You get to play and get thumb exercise, I guess. And you get to conquer the world on your video game. That's not life. That's junk. That's splat. Mm -hmm. When thinking about this, this, um, this message of our song, as some of y'all might know, it's called Nothing Between. Nothing Between. Man. It's written by, uh, I looked it up, the history of it. It's written by 
an African American Methodist pastor from the early 1900s. He was a, his name was Charles A. Tinley, and he wrote this song when his church was trying to grow and to build another building. But he felt that God's blessing wasn't there. And he said, and God showed us the things, there's something, the reason why God's not blessing us, because there's something that we're, that's dividing us. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to these words. There's nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Chorus says, nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. Keep the way clear. Not, nothing yeah, between. Right. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Habits of life through harmless they've seen. Must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There's nothing between. Nothing between like prior station. Self-life or friends shall not intervene. Though it may cost me much tribulation, I am resolved. There's nothing between. Nothing between even many hard trials. Though the whole world against me convene. Watching with prayer and much self-denial, I'll triumph alas. With nothing between. Amen. Chorus goes, I'll sing it. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that His blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of His favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between. What right now does Satan have launched in your life that is hindering you from God to blessing you. Yeah. That is hindering your relationship with your parents. That is hindering your relationship with your pastor. Baba, I didn't notice I was more studying. We, I, the first, when I read that, I know the story before, and, but I don't know what happened to Gehazi. You read the very next chapter, the Bible says that Elisha had a servant. doesn't give its name, but three chapters later in chapter 8, it mentions Gehazi again. He's in a conversation with leprosy, with his fingers falling off, with his children, perhaps have leprosy too. He's in a conversation with one of the kings of Israel. This is what he says. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he restored a dead body to life. All he was doing is just reliving the good days that he did have. But because of his lying and his dishonesty and lack of confession, splat. Splat. And all you can do is revel in the yesterday, the days of yesteryears. Young people, listen, God has a wonderful life for you. And it's not just your teen years, it's not just your 20s, 30s, 40, 50s, 60, 70, God takes you back. Don't go splat because you will not admit your problem. Will not be honest to your parents. And will not go to God and go to your authority and say, I'm sorry. I need to make things right. You might, I believe it's on the heart. Sometimes, if I know this, God will not, I believe you will forfeit the spouse that God has for you because you don't make, you, get the, you do not get the, the sin out of your life. Why, gentlemen, would God give you a pure virgin wife if you're perverting your head? I prayed. I used to pray as a teenager. I used to, there was a bridge in my hometown, the country, Louisiana, the swamp was. I used to go out there and pray as a teenager. Uh, I had my dog, Sasha, in Labrador, she'd jump in the water and play and everything else. I would pray. And there were some times I felt all alone. And I would go there and say, God, I don't know what you have for me, but I'm trying my best. And I used to think about, I wonder who she is. And um, I, I would say, God, I hope she's a blonde. Miss <laughs> Rose a blonde. And I did say this, God, I'll keep myself pure. Make sure you give me a pure girl. Amen. And by God's grace, me and my wife did you know, people, what are you hiding? I'm going to give an invitation. 
And whatever God's given your heart, whether it be selfishness, pride, a wrong habit, whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, whether it be perversion, whether it be gossiping, whether it be criticizing, whether it used to be having a rebellious spirit, whatever with your mind is, you need to confess with God. And then if you're serious about this, before you go play basketball, before you play volleyball, before you hang with your friends, you need to get up. If you need to, you need to go to that person, or you need to go and call your mom and dad, you need to call your parent, or whoever you have sinned, you need to make things right. You need to make things right. Every head about every eye closed. Dear Lord God, I pray that you help our young people here, God. God, I'm, I am so glad you are a forgiving God. Oh, I believe so much Satan puts in our head that, oh, no, forgive me. Or just, just say it's no big deal. You don't need to worry about that sin, but it festers. It gets bigger. It causes bitterness. Before we know it, we're splat. Oh, God, help these teenagers. I do not know what sin. God, we're all guilty of sin. Every day we need to confess to you. But, oh, Father God, I pray you help each own people to be clean. To be pure. Yes, we make mistakes every day, but God, we need to have a clean heart still. We can, we can listen to the Holy Spirit. Heads by eyes to close as a prayer, as a piano place. If you need to make things right, come forward right now. Come forward right now. There's something in your heart. I don't know what it is. It might have been something I say. It might have been something I didn't say, but the Holy Spirit told you. What friend do you need to give up? Some of y'all like this boy, you, you know your parents don't approve of him. Some of you have this girl you have in your dreams and you know it's not, she's not a good girl for you. Confess it. Just pour your heart out, be honest. God already sees your heart already in person. Just admit it. Just admit it. He's already sees it. time that I messed up as a teenager. I was in high school. I hid something from my parents. Nothing like terrible, but it was wrong. The truth is, my brother told on me. And I had to fess up to my parents. I knew he told my parent, and I went ahead of time to my parent. I said, I did it, Dad. And you know what? Before I did that, I had this pressure on me. Can't explain it. But I think all you know what I'm talking about. And I, when I admitted it, I thought my dad was going to yell at me. And he didn't. But I can tell you one thing. That relief that came off. It's worth it. Yes. Amen. It's worth it. I'm telling you. It, it's just a trick of Satan, young people. Some of y'all live so, not oppressed, but just downtrodden lives. And it's hard for you to grow in Christ because you got this pressure of sin on top of you. And I hope many of you came and you confessed it. Let's make it right now. I'm not, every, I'm not saying every sin you got to confess. A lot of you, of course, you confess it to God. There's something that you're being sneaky and being deceitful. From your parents' authority, wherever God, whoever it might be, and you, you know that they told you this, and you know you're breaking the rules. Listen, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You go to, go to her, go to whoever it might be. Make it right. Dear Lord God, bless these young people. God, I pray you help me right. I pray, Holy Spirit, do what I cannot do. 
Help these young people have nothing between. Nothing between. So we don't go splat. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, Josh said you are dismissed for free time, but let me say this. I don't know. Do you see if the other one group are dismissed? All right, either way, until the other group is dismissed, you gotta stay, you gotta stay this way. Don't go behind this because the other meeting place is over here. All right, stay over here until everyone's dismissed. Yeah, basketball's fine. You go out that way. Stay this way. Sleep that one then.